Okay, welcome back folks. This is uh, Leonard Gilbert coming back with another short video to build upon the foundation about taxation from a biblical perspective. If you recall, there are three ordained governments from God. They're the family, the church, and the civil government. Now why is this important to understand? Well, if they are ordained by God, the first thing we have to note is that they are all under God's authority. With that in mind, they each serve a specific purpose to promote God's ordained mission. If you can relate to a stool with three legs, if one of the legs are out of kilter, the stool is going to wobble. So at some point, the stool will tip over if one leg becomes non-functional. So you need to understand the importance of these governments if you are to rightly understand any system that has to be put in place to support the growth and sustainability of a society. If you also recall in my last video, I stated that communism is a religion and it is a, is a direct attack on Christianity. If it attacks Christianity, it attacks the God-ordained governments as well, which includes the family. Again, it is critical that you understand what you're up against if you are to combat such an evil. Gary Noah stated in his book, The Enemy, an informed response, you can't be something with nothing. Which goes back to my statement, the Bible is God's story and he's telling us how he operates and what he expects of us. Now let me get back to the first ordained government, which is the family. Now this is going to sound strange, but when we talk of family government, the first thing we have to consider is self-government. And when I speak of self-government in the simplest sense, it means to take personal responsibility for our own personal duties. Now why is that important? Again, your family is the first taste of government. Parents are supposed to govern their homes. In Ephesians 6, 4, it states that, And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. If parents neglect this responsibility or do not do a good job of governing their home, they should not be surprised when one of their children looks them right in the face and tell them, you're not the boss of me. When that child grows older and he steps outside the boundaries of respecting the authority and that lack of understanding of responsibility, you can't expect a natural progression from one form of government to the next. A self-governed person is one that can regulate his attitudes and his actions without the need for external coercion or force. That is why the gospel of Christ is so important. Obeying comes from the heart. This is why the scripture tells us that law is not made for a righteous man, but for those who are lawless and rebellious. It is God that changes the heart. In Ezekiel 36, verses 26 through 27, it states the following. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and call you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgments and do them. In a nutshell, when the family is torn apart, this will have ripple effects on the whole chain of the God-ordained institution. Communists need to make that happen so they can take the responsibility away from the parents and have their children indoctrinated to be wards of the state. And this is the whole purpose of public education. People are trapped in the system for various reasons, but many people have been conditioned to think that the state is responsible for educating their children, especially when they hear the word free. But in reality, the government has to steal from others via the property tax and take ownership of your property to make it work. And what most people do not realize is that the whole educational system was orchestrated by communists from the beginning and fulfills another tenet of communism which promotes free education for all children. I'm going to save my assessment of public education for another video and what true education would look like in a free market society. My point is to show everyone how communism can destroy a nation without firing one bullet. Now let's return to our discussion on family. I want to state this again. The family is the first government. It was here before the church as well as the state. You can reference Genesis 2, verses 21 through 25. If God is the creator of the family, when you attack the family, you attack the whole moral order that follows. So we should not be surprised to denote that the other ordained governments, church and state, will share similar characteristics to the family. Since all these governments are ordained by God, the structures will share a great degree of commonality. Specifically, God has provided the Bible for guidance to all his ordained governments. Now, when we think about a pictorial, a good pictorial to present this is illustrated with the following diagram. First, at the top of the chain is God. God is independent and he has unlimited authority. 
Now under that command is where we have man and human institutions. Man is dependent upon God and is delegated. As for the institutions that are established, they are limited in authority. So they are not without constraints. As for the three ordained governments, family, church, and civil, they're all connected by the Bible. So they are all marching to the same tune. Another important foundation for each government is self-government because it starts with the individual first. Now let's lay out the general model for the uh, family. This is also very important. When we talk about the family and its structure, we have the issue of sovereignty, where you have rulers in the family, which you could reference Ephesians 6, uh, verse 4. We also have representation, where the husband and wife are representing the family, which you'll find references in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, and Proverbs 1, 8. You have the issue of law, where the parents are setting the boundaries. Again, you could reference 1 Corinthians 7, 19. You have jurisdiction associated, so authority to punish in the name of God. Proverbs 13, 24, and Proverbs 22, 15. And you have also the issue of continuity, where you're looking at loyalty and sustaining the family. Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3. Now let's dig a little deeper into these characteristics for the family. God delegated the parents to be the rulers in the home. If you recall, I said that if God ordained this institute, it has to be biblically connected to him via his word, or what we commonly refer to as the Bible. God gives us all that we need. He says in Acts 17, 25, it states, Nor is he worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives us all life, breath, and all things. This knowledge of God is to be transferred to the children. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 through 7 states the following. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So in a nutshell, you are to be the living example for your children. There is also a hierarchy established. Since the church is the bride of Christ, the husband represents the head of, of the wife, and the wife represents her husband to the children, and the children are accountable to both. There is a chain of command that follows. By the way, if the husband represents Christ, and he and his wife have to, he and his wife both have to know and understand what they what that means from a biblical perspective. I would encourage you to read Ephesians 5, verses 22 through 33. But I do want to read Ephesians 5, 33, which states the following. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. By the way, I do want to go off script for a moment to recognize my lovely wife that went to be with the Lord five years ago. She was truly the godly woman that I needed to help me to become a better representative leader of my family. Even with my imperfections and bad decisions, she was always there to support me in trying to be the man that God wanted me to be. Now moving, moving on to wrap this up, the family also has laws. It states in Galatians 6, verse 2, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is this law? The law of Christ or the law of God is provided for us in Scripture. Now going further, the children are to obey their parents. Proverbs 1, verse 8 states, My son, hear the instructions of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Now if we were all angels, this would flow with ease. But since we were born sinners, Parents have the jurisdiction to discipline their children. In Hebrews 12, verse 5 through 6, it states the following. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. And when the children are obedient and the family is in order, this promotes continuity and inheritance. It states in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Simply put, when the biblical model of the family is followed, it sets the stage for the other God-ordained governments of church and state. Since the family is the foundation of all the other governments, it is critical for the development of the children. This is where their education begins. It is the training ground for future leaders as citizens and other godly roles that God may call them to fulfill. 
So hopefully you can understand that the Marxists, the liberals, progressive, and all other false religions are out to attack the family. With families struggling to make ends meet because of rampant induced inflation and government expansion to take the roles of the parents, this pulls both parents away from the home. Programs created to continue the destruction of the family, like daycare, public education, and welfare, have become the norm. And since these programs have now become the norm, they serve as a mechanism to tear apart the family, just as they were designed to do. Now, I started out with the family, and I'm going to tie this into the property tax. So let me end this with a statement that I found in the book entitled God and Government by Gary DeMar in Volume 1. He states the family is closely tied to private property, which he references in Exodus 2012, and the abolition of private property requires the destruction of the family, which he references in 1 Kings 21. Private property is attached to the biblical mandate of dominion. The property tax is one way of disposing families of their properties. Property values can escalate while the income remains constant. Again, this happens in times of government-induced inflation policies. As for defining dominion, I cannot put it better than Henry Moore's in his book entitled The Biblical Basis of Modern Science. He states, the command to subdue, subdue the earth means bringing all earth systems and processes into a state of optimum productivity and utility, offering the greatest glory to God and the benefit to mankind. Now, as for the path forward, the property ownership or private property is attached to the biblical mandate of dominion. This means that we as Christians have a biblical responsibility to vote against property tax height and to vote for those people who are working toward reduction. This does not mean moving from one ungodly untaxed burden to another. Inevitably, we want to eventually work toward the elimination of the property tax, and that is why we're on a mission to do so. The next video will be on the God-ordained government of the church and how they are also to serve an integral part of the Dominion Mandate. If you would like to contact our group for additional information about the path forward, you can contact us at stoppropertytaxes at gmail.com. Or until next time, thanks for listening. God bless.